Okay, so now we're at the uh, section of anatomy where we're going to study the mouth, the mouth area. Pretty, you know what? Pretty complex area, actually. So we're going to take it slow. We're going to talk about structure first. We're going to talk about the ball form of the mouth, this muzzle form, ball form in here. Then we're going to talk about the U shape of the mouth or the dentition, the uh, dentition here, or the dental structure. Uh, which is more of a horseshoe type of shape through there. And we're going to talk about the, the bone anatomy. Then we're going to talk about the muscular anatomy that pulls in through here and pulls down and pulls up to give you expressions. Uh, and we'll, we'll uh, pinpoint those uh, muscular structures, right? And then we'll talk a little bit about the uh, tongue formation, teeth a little bit. Their, their form, shape, etc. And then we'll uh, study some living anatomy. And then certainly we will go on to uh, put, kind of put, really putting it all together with uh, a couple of images of um, finished studies in the mouth uh, area. So as we begin, uh, we want to take into account the, the area of the mouth. And when we talk about the mouth, we're really going to be talking about not just right in through here, but up to the entire circular form of the maxilla area. This ball-like structure, really up in through here, all the way over and around through the chin, the mental labial group of the chin and through here. This whole area is certainly like a rounded sphere. So I want you to start thinking of it as a rounded kind of ball like structure and I'm going to throw a couple of couple of those out now set the skeleton to the side and we'll start we'll start drawing up here and I want you to think of it this area as this kind of wonderful make sure I'm in the camera here I'll go down a little bit lower there we go maybe right in through here is this wonderful kind of living spherical form Okay, so I know I've got a circle, but we're going to uh, eventually turn this quickly into a living, breathing kind of mouth area. So I've got one here, right, let me erase this off here a little bit up higher. Definitely want to keep on camera. One here, and then we'll have another one down here. And so I'm going to show you how to start to think about putting these structures on the mouth in a spherical kind of way. The tendency for younger or less experienced, young at heart, uh, less experienced artists is to continue to render these forms as flat across completely. It's if we took this area of the mouth and we straightened it up into a straight line, and kind of folded it up and over. We can't do that. These really go way back into space. So that's the first thing I want to start to show you with just the basic structure. So we'll do three kind of um, mouth uh, spherical air, uh, areas here. So let's put another one over here. And I'm working on uh, this toned paper with charcoal. You can work in a lot of different materials. I suggest all of all of you, my students have to, but you guys in YouTube land is draw a little bit bigger. I see some of the students I mentor in my mentoring um, uh, class I've offered for YouTubers is they draw a little small in these little tiny sketchbooks. You gotta get bigger, get physical with it too. Drawing small is fine, but also drawing larger is pretty nice too as well. So we wanna start to think about Placing and how to place mouth structures across a, 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 a spherical kind of form, a ball-like form to feel that across. And so the way I begin to think of it is, is kind of latitude and longitudinally. So we can come across this form a little bit. We have the mouth maybe going, maybe slightly going up a little bit. Maybe I'll pull it over more, a little bit more in the center in through here. And I don't always draw this when I'm drawing naturally, but I want to show you what I'm going, what's going on in my mind. So we're pulling across this ball-like form here, out and over, right? A little arrow there, and we're coming out in over here. 
little arrow coming down there. And then coming across the form, or actually we'll come across this way, coming across the form of that ball to give us that feeling right of turn that we want. We draw forms. This happens really fast when you're drawing naturally, which is what we want to get to. We want to think about the structure behind it. This way, coming across, curving across that ball. Now again, the tendency is to come straight across flat, and we want to break that, break that habit. That's not what we're we're, we're into here. So we're going to put uh, just kind of mouth and, and lips lips on here as well. So we might come up and find this area between the uh, the lips and the um, the bottom of the nose, the, this philtrum area into here. This undercutting kind of curvature that we all have right in through there. <clears throat> can feel that through this undercut of the philtrum. We'll undercut it here. It's that space there. To, to my knowledge, there's no known benefit to this area. I've tried to research. I, I can't find any, any known benefit to that. Now, I haven't asked a medical physician, but um, I've gotten I've read written states, statements by doctors, and there's no necessarily no known medical benefit. So we're going to draw these lips on here. Now I'll go into much deeper about lip structure. Right now I'm just going to draw not necessarily what you know right now, but kind of what we want to see in terms of just structure. So I'm going to feel this front part of this mouth, the lip, in through here, right in through here, coming across this ball, feeling this form across. Sometimes I think of it as kind of a, a pulley system here maybe and all the way over and through on the other side like so to get that kind of uh, turn, that pulley kind of feeling. We've seen that before with eyeballs. Same thing, since we're on a ball structure, same kind of thing. And so <clears throat> the center of the lip, the front part of our, our lip would be here. It's actually called the prokelion. We'll get into that deeper. And it would probably can turn, it can have a lot of different types of shapes. Come in like something like this and over. So we're very much keeping this in perspective, right? And so we have this the uh, lip coming back and through and over and around the mouth form and coming on down and through and across that rounded ball and back over and a little bit back till we get to what is the node area where we get this skin flapping in through here. <clears throat> across that ball structure and we'll get the same thing on the bottom a little bit this is kind of triangular in through here and underneath this flaps in through and we'll kind of come through here like so coming on down and around as it disappears and comes underneath like so for now same thing over here this gets a little trickier as we come back across we want to come uh, around the ball form but we're also disappearing and sliding back a little bit so this is going to be more arched uh, and more intense intense here as it's in perspective and squeeze it comes down and then through and over this will come immediately right in through here up and through we're over here but we have a squeezed position down and through over and we'll get that node happening about right in through here like so this gathering of the cheek we all have that and the older we get the more pronounced that can be plastic surgery can change that for those who um, can't afford that all right so I need to pull down actually I need to pull down the filter a little bit further here into here a little bit here and here right in through right in through there there we go this is very much a undercut kind of tube. And of course, the nose would, the septal area would be in through here. The nose would start up. Kind of in through here. The plane of the nose would be in through here. Not as important right now. So we have that in through there. All right, so let's hit the bottom of the lip now. Just feeling it across that ball-like structure. 
coming underneath kind of in two parts here a little bit shorter running right through here tucks underneath and disappears in through here comes across we're coming across this ball like so this dips this will dip will dip a little bit in through here center plane right in through there and then dip back out like so and then come back over dip underneath in perspective like so keeping that ball structure let me get the ball back in through here and on over and back underneath and we have our first first lip structure in that ball so kind of a three-quarter view if you will and kind of looking out do it a different color so we see it kind of looking out this way right right through kind of in that direction and the first thing again we found through that ball structure is really getting a feel for where this structure falls it's it's gonna it's not gonna change in any perspective it's always gonna be very rounded I know it's kind of horseshoe shaped too and I'll talk about that in uh, over here a little bit but I really want to impress upon you how round this is you can think of this as a rounder structure first and then modify a little further to uh, to what you see so I think that's going to be very important kind of a challenge for you in the beginning not to not to keep it keep it so flat because that really is the challenge is to take what we we think we know about the human in, uh, form especially anatomy and then start to adjust it to what this what we can be shown and be taught through uh, uh, a good artistic training and uh, uh, develop a truer nature of uh, of reality and, and what's uh, certainly what's going on okay all right so let's go on uh, to to this one down here and we'll do a straight on profile <clears throat> and we'll look we'll have the uh, the mouth working in this direction so we'll do that here and I think this one will do an even more challenging view over here maybe I should have done this in red on the the um, latitude and longitude kind of feeling of it and I'll, we'll, I'll set this one up now and we'll do something looking down this way deep deep together kind of composition is kind of nice so this one will undercut this way remember we're turning around and really wanting to come back here coming back flowing over we want to get that feel and then kind of splitting the latitude and longitude where they come together like the top pin of that could be here we would see that here the axis point here would be underneath about right in through there underneath we could come over like so so we'll set that up a little bit I'm feeling that structural roundness again of the of the mouth so let's work over here now a little bit and talk about a little bit more profile so as we come down we'll feel across and we're going to be in this kind of position where we have where we're looking at the mouth in this area so notice notice in through here we're looking at this form right in through here this is the end of the nose where the septal structures attach the middle of the nose so we're in profile so the axis line of that is going to be right on the profile line the true center of that coming all the way back to about at the end of the temporalis arch the temporalis muscle in through here so it's pretty pretty lengthy about where the mandible front part here this area here lines up with the maxilla in a round in through here so that's kind of again where our geography uh, is so if we're coming across that ball now up and through here we can start to feel really the end of the septal bone uh, as it comes outward here and then I'll just draw uh, uh, kind of a line for where the nose is going to be and I'll adjust to the size in a moment so we'll have that the philtrum will come down here we won't see the divot um, because we're not in the front we're we're uh, or three quarter we're tr totally truly profile here so we see that philtrum coming down and remember now we're across that ball so here's true through the center of the ball I'm going to make it a little curved it might be just straight but I don't want that I want a little curvature to it to give that feeling so I'm feeling around that ellipse in through here and that's why ellipses are important and that's why perspective is always important too as well so we feel that around 
You'll always hear me say that perspective is important. Students tend to uh, not do their do My students at the university here, at Northern Kentucky University, always moan and groan about perspective, um, no matter what project I give them. But then they see later on, oh my goodness, how important that was. And so please do your, eat your vegetables. Perspective is vegetables, right? So eat your vegetables. So we're in the profile line here. That means that this line is truly the center of the ball form in the front right here, but see how it's pushed over. Okay, pushed all the way over. So you've got to be careful and know that. that to me, this is a challenging uh, way to draw the mouth, especially the lips. It took me a while to get the feeling or the flow of the lips coming across because I always wanted to draw them as if they were a little bit three-quarter or seven-eighths and not true profile. Just remember that. That's the true profile line. I'll put P for profile across across here. All right, so we're coming down to the filtrum. So we feel that filtrum in through here. It ends, we're about right in through here where it ends. And then we're gonna feel this diagonal uh, flow coming down through the mouth, whether it's male or female. So we're gonna feel this come back. Now it's on a ball. Right now I'm gonna draw it just as a straight triangle. We're gonna have to curve it a little bit. And that's gonna come over to the orbicularis or a movement, or just the flow, structure the flow of that coming on down through here. So we're down in through here, right, skirting our way over a little bit this way. Orbicularis oris. Coming down and in through, <clears throat> like so, and over to feel that across. Okay, so we feel that top right in through there is where the filtrum will end, right in through there. And so we're going to get this <clears throat> structure of the lip coming out further. And I'll talk more about what lip material is. You'll be surprised uh, a little bit. It's the same as our other opening, uh, that material a little bit, uh, except it's on the back end of our body. You'd be surprised. Um, so we come down a little bit, it pooches out, but then it's going to curve back in to where they meet, and then we're at the top of the lip. We're here coming down across this ball, coming this way. So we're coming straight across where it ends, where we get to the node about right in through here where that cheek gathers. But we're going to curve, come up a little bit, just a little bit. It's very, very slight curve down can sometimes be then in and then back at the end to the node slightly undercut so we're over here we're undercut possibly there's lots of variations and then back under over under and then back over a little bit coming back through to finish that curve back to the node and of course this is where that cheek starts to gather and you'll get a shadow, a little bit of shadow. And the older the person is, the more that can gather, and depending upon the expression, etc. So now we get to this bottom part in through here where the lip meets the the top mit, lip, excuse me, meets the bottom. This is a prochelion or procolon. And right in through here where they get a little bit of a bulge and that breaks off a little bit, this is going to flatten but curve, coming through, we're right in through here, coming over that ball-like structure, right? So we're gonna curve and come through and over, and generally this disappears. It's not as strong a line. We don't wanna make it too harsh, but it disappears sometimes in shadow. I could put a little, little shadow tone here to make it disappear, but it disappears softly underneath there, fleshy. Very sausage-like, pillowy-like if you want, plump, full, supple, all those words, English words, uh, are good through here. So we have that. Then we can come out with the bottom lip structure here. This tends to curve in, right in through here, curves, and then slightly flattens just right in through 
here just a little bit and then wants to curve back in and gets into the inner mucous part of our mouth interlipped and through there. So we're going to come out through here. Notice that we are generally, unless we have a big bottom lip, which can change, we could be out here. We're going to follow a little bit of a turn back in to the uh, uh, mandible, but in that hyoid kind of boned angle to get us down in through here. This turns in a little bit through here, especially structurally. And then what you see individually when you get off the standard model can be uh, really varied. And that's what makes drawing so fun. But you get this and you get this angle back that way. And again, it follows the larger feeling of the ball, <clears throat> if you will, of, um, of our lips. So we have that bottom lip coming out and it could flatten curve through here and then come in Form. So now we're here, we're right here, and then we're curving underneath. This could flatten. Sometimes this is fuller. I like to draw it structurally flatter just to show that division. <clears throat> but there, there, there's some variations I'll show you when we get to that section of the, of the video too. Then we're right along here, coming back over, getting a little fuller, and then diving back in here, and then curving up underneath and disappearing right in through here. So these kind of disappear. This one will curve, come over this top part here. This one will disappear, get lighter through here. So this all kind of fades, if you can, in drawing right in through here. And this is where the lip, top lip really ends, really, really structurally very strong in through there. <clears throat> this one comes down and through like so these will start to feel like they're coming out, coming out more, and then we get to the profile in through here. And then I can start to feel that chin in through here, the furrow, as it starts to straighten here, right, like so. Okay, and then we straighten at the furrow part, and then we get down to the bony structure and the mental labial group muscles of the chin in through here, and they can pop out pretty solidly in through there. <laughs> and then we can come back up with our nose, the ball of the nose, could, it could be, there could be a lot of variation, but I'll put it about right here. And then just kind of go up, kind of follow that arrow and through here. And then the nostril can kind of start to come over. Septal area right and through here. This, so this would connect up and fit right in through there. This is very much rounded orbicularis orus. And underneath that form, there's going to be <clears throat> a, a grouping of five pulley muscles that start here and come down, here and come down, here and come down, here and come down, and over here and come over that are going to get us this pulling, what I call the five pulleys, that pull up skin and muscle form to give us lots of expression. And we'll get there too. So this is a very active area uh, along the top of the ball of our um, our nasal and uh, excuse me our nose we're really nose and nasal nasal kind of area okay let's jump on to this last ball like structure and let's put some forms uh, on it too uh, as well uh, coming coming through here and see what we can do here so <clears throat> in through here we'll start to develop coming through where the filtrum would be, right in through here. It helps me just kind of locate the geography. So the head's going to be, think we're thinking about the head now, structurally in this position, kind of looking down like so. So we'll bring down the filtrum <clears throat> here, that funky space between your no bottom of your nose, septal area, and the top lip. In through here, there's the filtrum area. Curves in, we have that nice, undertow of the of the filter right in through there with that nice feeling nice feeling in through here right through there <clears throat> and then we're going to get this where the filter ends and the lip begins we're going to get this uh, notching this M part of an M shape this is a very soft M I'm going to draw it let's see where you can see it right over here 
and it it um, is very much like this in image shape. So the philtrum's here, right, in through here, but then we see this letter M for the lips for the front lip structure that can come out later on winged out through there. So look for the M, if you will. Now, we want to continue now to think about our perspective, our structure. So if the ball was all the way through, elliptically, the mix, part of the maxilla, not all of it, but enough of it, we can think of it like so, round through our, through our form and our teeth, our mouth, our lips come back this way and they turn and disappear from us back through that way. That's important. Then we can start to feel this coming down, the M coming down here to the center feeling and then up or down through here. So we've got that front area starting to get mapped out of our mouth and this is our center coming down of our lip. We'll make these a little smaller. Right in through here to the prochelion or the front lip. Now this, this can be in many different directions. You'll see that on a lot of models. It could be straight, it could be inverted. I like to make it just structurally a little bit wider. And here's our M form in perspective. This starts to get squeezed on this side. Here's our ball, finishing our ball over here. <clears throat> so it'll get squeezed over here. And that's not a strong line, it's a felt line uh, for form. So we can know where our front lip here starts to end. We have generally three parts to our front lip, two parts to the bottom, but I've been, uh, through my research, I've seen uh, surgeons, doctors, plastic surgeons talk about a, a, a two, three structure, two at the top, three at the bottom, and I'll get more into that as we go. Now feeling the pulley over here, I might feel it. Here the pulley was down here. Here they're over here, right? So. I'll draw that and I'll draw it in red so we can feel that that pulley around, right? Like so where the note is. Here I feel it where I want to shoot to. I don't always draw it, and this is gonna disappear as it comes across the ball, right? Like so. Woo. And then you can make uh, cool noises. You know, woo, down, down, and under, and then over. That would be uh, somewhere over here, and that's gonna fall across. So, I might feel this as a straight point here, straight point here first for the, for the lip, and then I start to feel the natural curve. And this is gonna get some variation, but this can come down like so, and then over, and then feel the node where it gathers, kind of curls like so structurally, and tucks underneath where we get the orbicularis orus and the cheek zygomatic structure ending and then coming down in between in through here. This would uh, get a little bit planed off in through here. So that's the node in through here. So now we have to come across now this way and the filter would be a little thicker, a little thicker here coming through. And we want to get this feeling coming through going to stay wider longer through here and then get squeezed in through here like so and then feel around and it's going to disappear on us. We won't see the node on the other side because it's behind that ball about right over in through here but the end of the form this is going to pooch a lot right in through here. So we get this underneath now this lip to go a little faster in through here right in through here this is going to tuck and finish disappear or that tissue that membrane of the of the lip of which is just really lesser layers of skin and we see more blood vessels come about a million over a million capillaries in there to give it a red look or a darker look for most of us depending on your ethnicity if you're really dark colored it will still change your color if you're lighter, fair, Caucasian type skin, they'll get a little bit redder. It could change for, for a lot of different ethnicities, and we'll look at those a little bit. So coming through the ball over here, and then turning underneath the prochelion, I'll make it a little bit more pronounced than it, maybe it is uh, on some people. Some people really, so even this can get set, uh, deviated in through here, which is pretty interesting. This will tuck under 
here and back underneath we get some pooching but notice follow this red line we're really pushing look how squeezed we're getting we have all this space on this side but we have no space here so we've got to get it really much riding through here and tucking back over disappearing and coming over and back and attaching over here to the end of the node where we get the the plane of the nose now would be would start to be the septal plane right through here so we would get this probably of the plane of the nose something like this the front plane that wedgy part remember that and then coming coming up right like it through something like that we would get in through there and so we've got the top lip now the filtrum part made that a little bit long in the beginning but I think that recovered on that nicely <clears throat> this will go in a little bit like so and so now the bottom lip will feel coming across here and I generally feel the front part of it I feel this in through here so I change the center a little bit which is fine for my viewpoint you can always change a little bit right in through there. there's the true center so we get those two parts here and so the bottom lip would feel maybe right in through here structurally okay and then we're going to turn remember we're going to go shorter underneath and we could even flatten this out if we want i'll show you that we could take this and erase a little bit take this back a little bit there we go and flatten that out as we come down just like we are here, right? We have a little bit of it here. You don't really get to see that much. But we flatten here a little bit and then we can bulge here. And then we want to come back underneath and kind of slightly disappear the line, get a little softer with it, not be so harsh. Right in through here. You can feel this structure on the ball. Because we're on a ball, we're on a very simple form. This is flattens. And then now we're going to be here on this side, bulge out a little bit. But now we're really going to tuck underneath and we're going to just disappear it on this side, right about there. So we have a pretty nice mouth structure going here, three quarter, with a pretty difficult position. And again, the more you start to learn about mouth anatomy and about putting everything on a ball, and then also you can think of it as a horseshoe, especially for teeth later on. Um, you're, you'll be that much more impressive with your drafting, drafting skills and through here. So we have that lip, kind of split that in two, just bring those out a little bit. And of course the furrow of the uh, chin here, as it straightens out from the, these front um, uh, teeth in through here. <clears throat> the uh, incisors in through here, these four incisors, it gets a little flat in through here. I've got so much to information sometimes my brain freezes for a moment. And so these four incisors make a pretty flat, and you can tell in this scale of the skull right in through here, and that's really the area where we have that furrow, the straightening of the uh, preach what I call maybe the pre-chin or the straightening here before we get to the mental labial group and that'll be a downward thrust you can see that downward thrust here and then straighten out along that curve about right in through here and then we can get to the chin proper kind of coming down a little bit right in through there coming across okay so there we go and I'll just pull that plane of the nose down a little bit you can see that all right so there we have the ball structure what I want to do now is is move the paper over a little bit and we'll talk about the uh, horseshoe structure and so when we do that we're talking about this kind of v-shape here you can see that v-shape now better of the structure of the mouth that is like a ball, a rounded sphere, but then we take the mandible off a little bit, we can really look at the dentition, dentitioning through here, um, the dental structures here, and also with the mandible, I'll take it off, you can see that it gets to be kind of a V-shape too, or what I like to call as a, a total uh, horseshoe shape, okay? All right, so let's go on to that, and we'll take a look at that structural area too uh, as well.
So let's look at that uh, horseshoe structure right in through here. So if you don't know what a horseshoe, what I'm talking about when you look at the end of horse's hooves and the metal structures that um, uh, uh, people who work with horses, uh, ranchers I suppose, and, and metal smiths, um, put on horse hooves to give them give them certainly strength as well. So that's what we call a horseshoe, just in case some of you didn't know that. So let's take a look at that area and take a look at, not only is it initially rounded, but we can shave off these sides a little bit when we get into the dentition in here. Dentition in here, I suppose. I keep messing that, that phrase up and I'm not, I'm okay with it. Um, uh, the dental structure and we start to see these rows of teeth. Notice how the back molars, these are the molars, these three, these two are the premolars, canine here, kind of like dog's teeth for, for tearing and ripping and chewing, and then we have uh, in front here the incisors, these four. Notice how they get curved really quickly. And look how the four incisors, the two in the front, Right, the medial, the lateral start to curve, canine, and we get we continue to get moving across these structures. And of course, we have the palate in through here, the nasal passages of the septal area through in here. So all of that is a ball structure and a horseshoe shaped structure as well. And of course, we see that the the uh, upper part of the skull, this area, the zygomatic area, the maxilla area can detach and the mandible can be taken uh, off. Of course, it can be put back on. And so obviously the masseter holds that together. The buccinator over here, we'll talk about that a little bit later, holds those together as well. And when we take the mandible off and take a look at this structure, it's a very important structure to draw and learn from. We see that the same problem arises is that this inner area, all of it's kind of rounded, but what do you notice really quickly? It's very much a kind of horseshoe uh, V-shape too as well. Notice that the teeth rise, the bottom teeth rise up a little bit, at least in this particular one as well. Um, and we'll talk about the, the teeth um, there are 16 above, 16 below. A lot of times the back molars, top and bottom, will be taken out. The, what we call the wisdom teeth, uh, these three areas as well. Of course, uh, I suppose all these teeth can be taken out if, if that's the case. But we have our molar structures here for uh, grinding and chewing. Then we have our premolars here, these two. They call them premolars because they're a change between the incisors and the, um, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the, the canines. And we have the canine here on the sides for tearing and ripping uh, uh, structures, meat and vegetable structures, food structure, and the incisor here for certainly tearing too as well. Grinding, tearing and grinding, and then uh, tearing in the front there. So let's draw this a little bit. Let's, let's talk a little bit about the structural shapes, if you will, of the, of the horseshoe. So we have, we all know about the ball now. And if we start to draw the, the horseshoe a little bit, we can feel this. It's important to feel so we could start out feeling the round ball in through here, okay? But then we can quickly go to the, so there's the ball, well, then we can quickly go to the <clears throat> horseshoe shape. So we have the rounded shape about right in through here as we come down, here's the center coming all the way down. So I'm drawing from the skull here to show you. And that's the way you learn is drawing from the skull, drawing from your instructor. Um, if you have a good one, hopefully you think I'm good. Um, and then applying that knowledge to yourself, going back and double checking the knowledge. So we have that here. It starts to, to make that curve out. It's not, it's not straight, so we're not here. We're not coming down straight. That would be complete turn here. So we're not there, but that's a good place structurally to go if you wanted to. So we could be here, we could be there. But what's really happening is you could play off that and then we really come out to here, don't we? Kind of like a bell 
or, or if you like Star Wars, which I like, a Darth Vader's uh, helmet silhouette, if you want to think of it that way, like that. Do so different, I want to draw overdraw to show you that, coming down that way, okay? And then here, we're coming across and going the same way, because we're in a straight view looking down, aren't we? Yeah, like so, so we have that. And then what happens is we start to feel that ending of the true roundness about here, about three quarters of the palette, maybe a little bit less, about right in through here, where I've got it. And then we can start to feel like where the structure is of the septal area underneath where the sinuses are, right in through here, coming over, coming over. This is a real structural drawing, right in through there. And I'll just shade this, shade those down a little bit. <clears throat> then we can feel where the end of the dentition is, dentition is, in through here, the teeth area, dental structure here, and it kind of just curves slightly over, over and through here, doesn't it? And it gets to be right in through, right in through there. So that's very much that horseshoe shape. Then if I kind of just group this whole structure together, we can be here, just kind of, uh, the, the outside is kind of where the outside line is, if you will, the teeth here, okay? In the inside line I'm drawing is about where all the teeth, this implied ending of the teeth. The incisors, kind of where they fit into the gum, or the uh, skull structure and through here, not the gum structure. And notice how there's, they make these wonderful ridges as the root of the tooth, and we'll talk about that, uh, demonstrate that a little bit, what teeth are and what their shapes are, shape is, how they root into these kind of up and down sort of cylinders, and they come back in, cylinders, they come back in, where the teeth embed up into, pretty fascinating kind of thing. So <clears throat> this line here, what I'm drawing through, and see how, again, it's angled out, and we'll just end with the very back molar in through here, very back molar, in through here, okay, right in through, right in through there structurally, so we have that. So notice that we're doing, and I'm just going to kind of uh, uh, shade this palette down a little bit in through here, just find that center of our palette right in through there, coming in through then the end septal area, obviously right back in through there where they split down. Where we find that a little bit. So <clears throat> notice how we can combine a ball and the horseshoe as well of these two structural areas, incisors, medial incisors here, lateral, and then immediately everything starts to get on a curve of a ball and then back to a horseshoe down in through here. Pretty fascinating uh, kind, of, uh, kind of feeling there, in through there. So if we wanted to add on, let's don't add on the teeth in this one, maybe we'll do another one over here. I'll get into teeth a little bit later, but I wanna do a couple of more views over here. We got space, I think, to do it, yeah, to do that and take a look uh, over here. So let's go and I'll move over uh, in through here. Take my trusty mouthpieces <clears throat> over through here. So now we're gonna draw one uh, a little bit from profile, maybe looking slightly up a little bit or maybe underneath. We'll go, we'll go maybe like profile, kind of like that. <clears throat> so let's take this idea now and apply it to both. Let's see how much space I have over here, okay. And so we'll take this initial ball reading of our structure and think of it as a ball, okay. And then we've got, and I'll put another one down here. So what I like about using the ball, thinking through the ball first is that from any perspective that you're drawing, it won't change. That's what's so nice about it. It's a real simple form and object. It's our most elementary form in the universe. Think about it, planets, stars, 
moons uh, are all crushed into this gravitational form, really beautiful form, perhaps black holes, the uh, underlying structure, what makes a black hole. I don't want to get into astrophysics because I am, that's not my expertise, although I find it fascinating. All right, so <clears throat> we're going to make this one feel like it's on an upward tick uh, moving this way. So this will be here. We're in profile. So there's our profile line right across here, across here, right? So we've got that. Um, so <clears throat> we can kind of feel that coming through. And what I'll say then now is the filter might be here. It will fall across that, that, that line, right? But then if we can look inside and think about that, we can think about this area, really both of them, here and here, what's going to happen is they're going to start to curve around that ball, but also get a little bit longer like a horseshoe, a horseshoe shape. So let's see and feel that. So when you draw teeth or have to draw teeth or a mouth open or lips open, you can start to see some of this. So what we're going to feel is this coming around, like so this coming around, like so, we might even be above, like in through here. But we're going to feel this curve through, curve through a ball. And here's where it gets a little bit more, maybe more challenging, is you, you want to get off the ball now a little bit. Instead of coming around like so, like so, okay, you want to start to feel this. This is where it gets a little funky, is it's going to start to straighten out. So you're like, wait a minute, you were telling me this is all round. Well, it is. On the outside, it curves around even more, but on the inside, we're starting to feel this a little flatter. Right about, and see the difference here? In right, so I'll, I'll take this. This will be kind of the separation of, of the incisor here to the lower incisor, here to here. The, 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 the simplified teeth line, we have the bottom two coming together, make sure I show you so you see it. Put the mandible back on here and here. Where those come together in through here, right? That's what we're seeing here. That center line where they, they that implied line where those teeth come together. That's certainly curved, very curved in through here. Very strong curve coming around that circumference of the ball. But then we get here, we get here, and then we start to straight all this here, starts to straighten out about mm, right in through here, really where the premolar, the, uh, we have the incisors, the canine, about where the canine premolar will be at here. We'll go into teeth deeper. You don't know those terms? That's okay. I had to refresh my, myself. Again, the forms matter more than getting every name correct. When you get the name correct, you're really, you're really on your way to learning. That helps. So we're right here where the, the canine, the premolar, the first premolar, and this starts to straighten out in through here. And we'll just take this to where, mm, theoretically, the molar ends, the back of the wisdom tooth. Back, I'll take this off again back in through here. So this curves pretty nicely, but see how it starts to straighten about right here, right where the canine, in through here, that canine point. And some people have a real, really, real strong point. And the joke is they call them snaggletooth people. Sometimes they hang out of the, of the lip a little bit, which can be very endearing. Um, and then this gets straighter. Even it's a little arch, but it still gets straighter back to that that ending wisdom tooth, that last molar. So that's what this signifies. There's the turn right in through here to straight. Right in through, right in through that area. Pretty important to know, right in through there. And if we, we drew the back side, it might look something like this, curving across. This could come over here. So if you've ever seen dentures are good to draw, or those fake dentures you see in, in at gag gift stores. That's something to see there to there. We see that curving, curving, and then straightening. And everything was based off initially right on that on that ball.
still see that move across like so. So we get that area of that mouth and we want to put the chin on a little bit. Maybe the furrow comes down in this direction, straightens out, and then we have the chin coming out like so and over and then back through. And you can start to see that mouth really come together, especially for, you know, later on, you know, putting on teeth a little bit. If we wanted to put on a, just a few here, maybe I'll just rough these in. We have the profile of the incisor, the next incisor here coming over and downward <clears throat> in through here and then the canine tooth coming in a little bit more snaggledy, a little thicker in through here. We feel that in through here. So canine and this and this is where it gets curved is right around that uh, premolar here in through premolar in through here and through there and then we get the three molars Three wider, thicker teeth. And I'm just drawing the crown of this, of this teeth right through here. And then the last wisdom tooth just kind of hangs on back at the end in this skull structure, kind of right in through there. So we start to feel that across there as well. Of course, this skull, this gets up into the skeletal structure, back up and through here, and then back in, covered with gum, uh, uh, material, mucus material. Uh, 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 gingiva area and then we get into uh, gum proper etc in through there all right let's do one more here let's feel that off in through here and then we'll do something we're kind of coming up underneath i'll show you a little bit <clears throat> so we're going to curve this ball now we're going to come through this way like so so we're going to see up underneath more like this a little bit we're going to take off part of this mandible so we're going to come up underneath a little bit further to see that so we're going to come around the ball and then have the have the v-shape too as well so this is really curving disappearing some in through here we'll see that turn we'll see this come all the way around and around the ball area right in through here curving through and then we're going to see we're going to pick up now the tooth uh, the teeth structure here along this curvature like so we'll see that so we want to feel that ball coming around we want to feel this coming across in through here so we're going to see mostly the bottom so i'm going to feel that bottom curve round it in through here then we're going to get past the incisors to the canine in my mind and then we're going to come across and then we're going to get into the premolar about right in through here. Come across in through here and over like so. And then this is going to straighten out some, isn't it? So we're going to get off that ball a little bit. And we're going to straighten out here. Okay. Like so. Straighten out a little bit. Like so. Now the upper part of that up here so if we keep on going turns 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 we'd disappear wouldn't we we'd curve through and this would pick up over here a little bit over and over and we'd pick up keep on coming keep on coming curve and then we would get straight too as well to pick up the top of the teeth in through here like so this would be a little bit thicker in perspective than this one and we keep on coming through here and I want to uh, finish to get this bottom part squared away so we'd feel this straight across coming across here here's where we'd start right in through here to end the curve curving across that ball incisors a canine premolar and then we're going to start to feel this come across eventually this will overlap here to here then we'll come through straighten out some we won't keep this curve, we'll straighten out in through here some, okay, like so. We have that, have that probably disappeared a little earlier, It'll be right on the cusp of that, of that line in through here. Straighten out and then finish underneath the palette, like so, here, and then come back. To a more box-like structure and then we're going to turn in and finish that two point underneath probably a little three-point perspective really right through there and over 
like so. Relatively the center of the teeth, like that, where the incisors would be in through there. And we're on our way. So now you have a structure to put your teeth. And this will be the center of that underneath parts of where we're at with our, our teeth. Now we have the bone structure coming out further, but we're kind of taking that off just to get the feel of that V-shape. And the true center of that, of all that V-shape, is about right here in perspective, going back about right right there there we are in through there so that's important to see too as well so we start to tighten that up a little bit in through here <clears throat> then i can throw a little shadow coming across this i should emphasize its structure coming this way like so moving across and through here and you start to get the idea how rounded this ball is. And then with our teeth, our dental structures, they want to take off and get flatter, don't they? About right in through there, it starts to turn right after the canine, around the premolar, somewhere in there, in that area. It's going to be a little bit different. And quite frankly, you just look for a turn. You know it, and you'll draw, and it can be, it doesn't have to line up exactly always. It can be very much... Um, person specific or structure structure specific but you don't want to make the turn way you don't want to be here and then kind of turn out you're too far and that kind of an idea so let's pick up where that ball was so we have the ball and the horseshoe structure guiding us to make now a more competent looking confident looking and accurate looking mouth structure just take some time to get all of that to to really work together. So practice that. Take this drawing, draw from this drawing, and uh, continue for everything you're learning in anatomy. You know, when this series is done, all of these drawings are done, the entire human body, it'll be completed for you. Draw, draw, practice from line. Practice drawing good structural drawings. The more you can do these out of your head, from imagination, the more you learn it. It really is kind of a, a workhorse, labor-intensive kind of approach, but, but it really is good structure drawing has to be practiced and learned, especially if you're, you're part of your teaching practice is that, like mine is. You have to draw really good structure um, teaching demos to make that really, really work. And this, this is basically where the separation of the teeth are. But what I'm trying to say here, to get back to the true point, is to draw these out of your head really well and um, master them and it makes drawing the from the model that much more confident and confident. So I'm just going to shade in where that turn would be, where that teeth, teeth, that canine area right in through, let's pick that back up about right in through here would be, right in the canine premolar area coming back in and over. It's a very simple simple form to draw um, uh, to really kind of um, get the feel and look of the uh, the model model form in the mouth area so our next move now is to take a look at the bones of the mouth or the bone area we've already started, looked at them already some a little bit but now find the real quite complex areas now of the mouth there's quite a bit of muscles and i'm going to rattle them all out to you later on i'm not going to put them on the screen that's for you to go and find a good book of a nanny. and there's several good books i don't have one to just recommend right off the top of my head i've got um a couple that i use here and there uh, but i've learned it you know pretty well that just i have to go back and refresh my memory about what's what's there a little bit so we're going to study bones, the muscles of the, the face, and how they're working, and um, then we will continue on. That's our next step. Okay? I'll see you then. All right, so welcome back. Now we're at the section where we're going to look at bone anatomy and especially also now muscular anatomy of the mouth uh, 
area. So what I've got in front of us here are three sketches, pretty obviously very large piece of paper. And I've pulled out the lens so you can see all of them. So as I'm going through bone and muscle anatomy through here, I can give you three different views. I've got a three quarter uh, facing left view and I've done all these sketches from the skull. Uh, I'm going to have reference images for you uh, on uh, in this video, either at the back or the front, I haven't decided yet. You'll see them there, I'll let you know. Um, and you can draw from those if you don't have a skeleton to put this together. Or uh, I'm going to pop up this image, I've already popped it up before this video, this section of the video runs, so you can actually lay in this sketch. We've got a three quarter front, we've got a full right full frontal view here to the left and then we've got a profile view uh, as well so I've got three different views to show you when I'm putting muscles onto the um, uh, skull structure and specifically that help with uh, typically the mouth uh, area okay so that's what we're looking for so you want to uh, I suggest doing all three of these sketches on a piece of paper of your choosing my students you'll use probably Progresso pencil or charcoal, um, but anybody else you can use uh, certainly what you want there in YouTube land. And then, excuse me, um, we're going to now put these these forms and structures onto our skeletal model to get a good sense of, of what is underneath and making some of these, these uh, forms that um, quite frankly make up the, the mouth area. All right, so let's start in through here. We've, uh, and we'll start three quarter here and you'll jump over. One thing I wanna show you is this muzzle structure of the mouth uh, before I lay in too much more. And I did, I laid these all in to save us a little bit of time, quite frankly. Um, is this round, here's the ball area here. Here's the ball area over here in profile. You can see it fitting through the maxilla area, this structure right in through here, right in through here in the larger ball area of the mouth. And then also in a front view, see how it goes about halfway, feeling about halfway through. I just kind of transfer this height over through about halfway through the nasal cavity, the septal area, about right here and right here, coming all the way through, and it ends about halfway through the eye orbit in through here. And then on the profile view, it actually goes back. Look how wide it goes back in this view. It actually gets overlapped a little bit by the anterior part of the mandible, this U-shaped section in through, in through there. So I just wanted to, to relate that to you. Let's go ahead and start in on on some of the um, muscles in a repeat of the bones. We know the nasal cavity, the nason, the zygomatic arch is gonna play a role um, in this area, as well as the frontal prominence and also the superciliary arch in through here. The maxilla is gonna play a role and then we'll get into a little bit of where these muscles start, where they're going to be attaching through along this ridge in through here. And certainly the lower part of the, the mouth of the mandible area will be will come into play uh, as well. So pretty complex little area, exciting little area to get a lot of different expressions with human form and the mouth and uh, happiness, sadness, glee, joy, depression, anger. There's so many little muscles and quite frankly I'm eliminating some because they don't necessarily make landmarks of, of the face. So we're going to start in um, and I'm going to start in with a review of a couple here, and then we're going to, these should be newer to you as well. And I'm going to draw them uh, more in black. The first one we're going to start with is, you should know this one already, is the masseter. And it, it is that major jaw muscle right here that attaches along underneath here in the zygomatic arch, comes down and fulfills itself out in through here. It, leaves a little bit off the mandible to the side, so I'll, I'll put it, start to put it in through here, up and over, very massive jaw muscle, aids in chewing through here, lays on top of, underneath the zygomatic arch in through here, and then over the mandible coming down in through here, we have that masseter form, right in through here, very nicely putting in, I'll give a little bit of tone, 
in through here, so it lays in through here. Profile three quarter. We'll see it here, attaching over like so. It can kind of bulge out, especially when you're chewing gum or you're talking. It can get sore when you talk too much, like I talk way too much, right, all the time. Students here at NKU are definitely shaking their heads, for sure, yes. And maybe you think that YouTube lamp. Uh, in an over here now in profile, or, or frontal view, we'll see that master. We've seen this already in head and anatomy. remember that? So we're reviewing that a little bit. This will bulge out a little bit, just a touch. And wider and larger men, for the most part, this will come down and over, like so. Get a little bit tweaked and thinner down at the bottom and through in through here a little bit. There we go. So there's your masseter, masseter muscle right in through, right in through there. Right. Now, <clears throat> the idea here is to be able to practice it, it's this and know this from memory. And the way you do that is just draw a lot. Use photo reference when you need to. Uh, but when you learn it, you can practice it from memory and you just draw it and like, just kind of whip it out like I do. But that comes at a lot of training. So don't think that I can just do this willy-nilly and easily. This took some years of kind of putting this to memory in good usage. There's your masseter. So the next form I want to show you is called the buccinator. That's a pretty cool name for a muscle, I think. And it falls in through here. Now these are this muscle is not necessarily attached onto the teeth, but in the cheek area, we see it fill in this gap a little bit in through here. Maybe I'll start with profile a little bit in through here. And we see it fill this gap underneath here. This also aids in chewing and mastication, and it fills in, bulges in through here, right in through here. This is the buccinator, B-U-C-C-I-N-A-T. OR it's, it's kind of a kind of a real strong kind of name pretty fun fun to, to say buccinator in through here and I'm not really going to go in this video into teeth the teeth area so much we'll do that in the sections coming up a little bit so